Hello, my name is Chris Kovach, and I am the Regional Sales Consultant in Northeastern Florida for Toby Dynabox. Today what we're going to talk about is how to make simple button modifications within the Communicator 5 software. So where we're going to start today is I'm just going to choose something uh, that one of my clients uses pretty frequently, and that's My Visual Scenes with Words. I'm going to go into My Visual Scenes with Words, and I'm going to go into the Talk Bubble. And in the Talk Bubble area, what it shows me is no, yes, hi, bye, and some other common phrases we might use throughout the day. But as we scroll down through to pages two and three, we'll see there's quite a few areas for us to add personalized communication. So what we're going to do is we're going to personalize one of these buttons now. To personalize one of the buttons, you need to be able to get into the edit button option. So there's a couple ways of doing this. On the iSeries device, what you can do is hit the button on the left-hand side of the device with the three dots to bring up your quick menu guide. Or you can touch and hold the screen and bring up the quick menu guide that way. Either way, we need to get to the quick menu guide and we need to hit edit button. So once we hit edit button, you'll see that all of the buttons are outlined in red and we'll select the button we'd like to make a change on. We're now presented with the edit button options. You can use, or I'm sorry, you can read through uh, this quick pop-up that says use this edit button tool to quickly change the contents of one button. To change several buttons simultaneously or for advanced editing, use edit view which we'll cover in a different, uh, a different video. So I'm just going to select, please don't show this topic again, or this message again, and I'm going to click OK. So now what I want to do is I want to program the text that I want on my new button. In this case, I just want it to say, go away, please. Now, that's the text that will be displayed on my button, as you can see over here on the preview. Now, I want to put an image on that button as well, and I want to try and keep it consistent with the rest of the images. So I'm going to type in away, and I'm going to search for something that looks like uh, I want someone to leave me alone, I want to be by myself for a few minutes, uh, and actually this one looks perfect. So I have a, you know, a figure here pointing to please go away from another, uh, to another figure. So I'm going to use that as my symbol, or as my image, and now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put sound onto that button. Now we have a couple options for sound. We can use a synthesized speech, which is the voice built into the device, which is what's consistent with the rest of this page, and we can listen to how that would sound. Go away, please. Go away, please. Now, if we didn't like that or we wanted someone to have personalized feedback, we could actually record a voice uh, of our own by using the recorded sound function. And we can record mom, dad, the SLP, or someone else saying, go away, please, or do that for any of these buttons. So I'll demonstrate that for you now. When you hit record sound, it will bring up the record uh, new sound option bar. To record a sound, you simply click, click the record button, speak into your microphone uh, on your computer or on your, uh, on your device, and then hit the stop button. So we're going to do that now. Go away, please. And I'll hit stop. And I can preview that before putting it on the button. Go away, please. And if I'm happy with it, I can just hit finish. If not, I can re-record over it and continue on my way. So I'll hit finish. And now I have the choice of putting that synthesized speech or the recorded voice onto that button. Go away, please. Or go away, please. Now some of the options, uh, some of the other options that exist are adding a different sound file. So if we had multiple recordings already done and we were just multiple, or, uh, using the same recording in multiple locations, we could browse for that file now and add that uh, to the button as well or we can tell it that we don't want any sound on the button. In this case, we're going to keep it consistent. We're just going to use the, synth the synthesized speech uh, of the device that we've currently selected for this page set. Um, what you can also do is tell the device to speak only the button on the text, which is what you physically see, the go away please, or if you wanted to, you could type in a completely different message. So you could make it say, please give me a few minutes, or please go away, I want to be alone. You can program it to say whatever you want so that the verbiage that you see on the button doesn't necessarily have to match what the button says when it's pushed. But in this case, we're just going to leave speak text on the button, and we're going to click OK. And now you'll see that my button has been saved. Go away, please. OK. So now uh, we've made the modification to that button but we haven't actually changed the, the page set. So if we were to exit now and not save, our changes wouldn't be there. 
So what we can do is, there's a couple ways to do this. You can hit back, hit the three bars and exit, and it'll ask you, do you want to make the changes? And you can say yes. And then you can actually resave that document as uh, another name and or keep the same name and you'll be presented with some options to replace the link as the old uh, to replace the link which is what they recommend so this would be the default to add it in duplication to the old version or to not change it and not make the save at all so we'll just say yes replacing the link to the old version and we'll hit OK so now we've made our change and when we go back into my visual scenes with words we go back into talk We'll navigate down to where our button is, and you'll see we have our button. Go away, please. Okay. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks, and have a great day.